Hey, it's Joe. In this video, we're going to check out this awesome free open source tool called Karate DSL that's going to allow you to create automated tests for your API test using a BDD DSL approach. Check it out. So you just want to start up your favorite IDE. I'm going to use Eclipse. I'm going to assume that you already have Maven and Java set up. If not, make sure to check out my other YouTube videos down below on how to get started with Java and Maven. Then we'll do a file new, create a new project, and base it on the Karate Maven archetype. We'll do file new, and I'm going to create a new Maven project. So I'm just going to take the defaults for the first screen. On the new Maven project dialog, we're going to click on the add archetype button, then enter in the following information. So I should find the Karate archetype. So just click on it and then click on next. Right, for group ID, you can put whatever you want, but I'm just going to put in the name of my company. I'm going to call it Karate Demo. Then I'm going to click on Finish. All right, cool. So once, once the Octep is created, you should have a new project in your Eclipse IDE. If you expand the project, it comes with some pre-made examples. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually interact with my Jenkins job and in Jenkins. I just have a brand new install and I created one job. And what's great about Jenkins, it has a rest API. So it allows you to inter interact with it headlessly, which is cool. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go under test Java examples folder. And I'm just going to create a new feature file. And I'm going to call it Jenkins.feature. And for some reason, it's complaining about my Java path. So I'm just going to make sure it's set correctly. I'm going to go into Projects, Java Build Path. I notice it's complaining about it's missing the main Java. So I'm going to create a new folder. Because it's using Maven, it expects the Maven, it expects the project to have certain folders. So I'm just going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it source, main, Java. And once again, I'm going to right click on my project, go into properties, go to my build path, and I should no longer have that error message. I'm also going to double check my build path itself. So I'm going to click on the libraries tab, then I'm going to click on edit. I don't want to point it to JRE, I want to point it to the JDK. So I want to click on alternate JRE, and I'm going to click on install JREs, and then click on edit. And for the directory, I'm going to point to my JDK rather than my JRE. Finish. Apply. Once we have our feature file created, we're just going to create on the very first line the keyword feature followed by some text describing what our feature is. So this is as a user, I want to demo karate using Jenkins. Also, when you're using BDD, you want to create scenarios. And scenarios, basically each scenario contains steps that tells Cucumber what to do. So we're used to creating test in BDD land, a test is a scenario. So my very first test, I want to make sure that Jenkins is up and running. So if you ever read the Cucumber book, Behavior Driven Development for Testers and Developers by Matt Wynn, they have a great example of what a scenario, a typical scenario pattern is. The first one is you want to get the system into a particular state. The second one is you want to poke it. And the third, you want to examine it. So these are usually described in given when thens. So I'm just going to create my first given, given URL. And I'm just going to type in the path to my Jenkins server. So all that's doing is say, given I have a URL and my URL equals the path to my server, then my when is I want to get that URL. So I'm going to use the keyword in Karate called method and pass it get. Now I want to verify it. So in BDD, usually a good practice is you only put your verifications within your thens. So I just want to verify that I get a status of 200, meaning that I know Jenkins is up and running. All right, so that's my very first test. So in order to execute the test, you also need to create a Karate runner. So underneath examples, I'm going to create another class. And I'm just going to call this Jenkins test. 
Now, one thing I want to show you really quick is if you're starting from a project that already exists, you're going to want to add the karate dependencies to your existing Maven project. So if you go to your POM file, because we created this based on a existing Maven archetype, it automatically created the correct POM file for us. But if you double check when it's your POM file that it created, you can see it already entered in the karate dependency that is needed in order to use karate. So I'm going to go into the Jenkins test class we just created. I'm just going to import the karate J unit runner. And then we're just going to use the annotation run with. So when this class is used, it's going to use the karate class. And so it's saying we also need to import the org J unit runner. So we're just going to accept that. And then let's run our Jenkins test. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to right click on the Jenkins test class, go to run as, and then select J unit test. All right, so I did a typo. Just make sure you have the correct URL specified. So that's why we're getting that error message. Let's save all, and then let's run the test again. Awesome. So if you look under the JUnit tab, you can notice that the test ran and that the status return to us was 200. It also ran the example tests that are part of the project also. And you notice these passed as well. So if you were to change the status to say 403, and then run the test again. You would notice the test failed. If you clicked on the failure, you could see the error message expected 403, but got the code of 200. So now that we know Jenkins is up and running, our next test, I wanna just go in and grab all the existing jobs and verify that actually I have a job called Joe Project One. So in order to do that, all I need to do is add an and step so you can chain together thens and ands. So I want to make sure that once I make the get request, I get a response back. I want to verify that the response is 200, meaning everything's okay. And then I want to match and make sure that I can find the text Joe Project 1 in my JSON response. So I'm going to add an and clause. I'm going to use the match keyword. And I want to make sure that the response contains jobs, because I know it's an array, I'm gonna get, grab everything in the array, do name, contains, Joe Project one and Before we run this, let's just take this URL and just look at the JSON to understand better what this command is doing. So if you open up a browser and you just navigate to that URL, this will show us the JSON that's going to be returned to us from our API. And notice I have a nested job list of different jobs. Right now, I only have one job. If I had more than one job, they would all be listed underneath these jobs array. So this is the JSON that's being returned to me. What I'm doing is if I had multiple projects under jobs, there would be multiple entries here. And because it's an array, I'm doing jobs star, meaning grab all the jobs that are listed underneath jobs and give me the names and then make sure that it contains or matches on the word Joe Project 1. So if I had multiple jobs here and I had Joe Project 2, 3, and 4, I just want to verify that of all the jobs that are returned to me, that the one I really want, Joe Project 1, actually is contained in that response back from my get request. So before we run it, let's also change our response back to 200. Save the test, run the test again. Awesome, if you look at your response, you notice that it's all green, it's all good. It expected Joe Project and actually got Joe Project 1 back to it. So the great thing about starting with the karate archetype is it comes with baked in examples already. I just wanted to start from scratch to show you how easy it is to create a new feature file and create a test. But like I said, as you can see, it comes with some existing tests that if you want to explore a little bit more, you can see some other scenarios and other types of behavior that you can use within Karate. You also wanna check out the Karate documentation on GitHub, it has a really good readme file, and it shows you all the different actions you can perform, the different types of functions and keywords that you can use within the Karate DSL. And I hope you notice this. What's really, really crazy about Karate is notice we didn't use any step definitions. So if you've ever done any sort of behavior-driven development using Cucumber or JBehave or SpecFlow, 
you usually have to write code underneath your feature files called step definitions that actually execute your given one thens. But with Karate, it already creates all the step definitions you need in order to get started with JSON, HTTP, or XML. So you don't even need to know how to write any Java code. And you're also able to create your API tests in a BDD syntax without all the overhead of having to write code to implement your given one thens. I haven't used much of it, but I just wanted to do a quick example of how you can get started using Karate. Because I think if you're doing any sort of testing within Java using Cucumber JVM, that if you want to minimize the amount of code you need to write, as you notice we didn't write any code, this may be a great solution for you.